When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. In Fairfield County, something new comes across my desk every day. Crimes are committed, cases are solved, and a community is made safe by the hardworking employees of the Fairfield County Sheriff's Office. Welcome to This Week with Sheriff Dave Phelan, a weekly program here on LSN. We're also carried by a number of the radio affiliates here in Lancaster. Do appreciate you, the viewers and listeners, that join us each and every week. Uh, and um, it's just a pleasure to do this program. We've got a lot of great programs coming up this year. And back by popular demand is Sergeant Jesse Hendershot. was here last week to tell us about the police and fire games coming up this summer, June 12th through the 17th. And for the uh, viewers or, or listeners that may have missed last week's program, just give us a real brief overview about that once again. Okay, the uh, Police and Fire Games is open to all law enforcement, firemen, and uh, military, and their spouses. And um, anyone that wants to participate, um, go to their website, the Ohio Police and Fire Games dot, um, org. So they can go there, they can look at all the different events that we have, over 35 different events and um, they can get signed up. It's $40, doesn't cost a whole lot. For everyone that's you know local here in Lancaster, it's, um, they don't have to travel, so. And you surprised me last week, you said typically there'll be 500 to 1,000 participants. Yeah. And that's law enforcement, that's, firefighters, yeah, all over the state of Ohio and beyond, probably. Yeah, actually, um, last time I looked at the numbers, there was probably about 15 to 20 other states also represented by at least one person. Wow. Yeah, because no one else has these games around. So there'll be a lot of lawmen and firemen in the, in yeah. the community that, yep. that, that those three days. Yeah, so the entire week. So the hotels will be booked. Now, you are the uh, commander of the Community Watch Program. And for uh, some of our viewers or, or listeners that really doesn't know what the Community Watch Program is, what is, the pro what is that all about? So the Community Watch Program started back in 2007. And... Um, they had about 30 some members that signed up for the first class and they go out and they patrol in um, cars in the county okay and we have three different stations um, they come out of lancaster pickerington and uh, canal winchester and um, you know we just recently got some new vehicles for them that that we purchased and um, two of them vehicles under 35,000 miles it's so pretty good that is pretty good so uh, they're pretty excited to actually get out there and start driving around in the county again and um, you know they we ask them that they do eight hours a month, um, so most of them do that. Okay. And they go out in four-hour increments, and um, most of them like the four hours instead of going out for a long eight-hour day. You know, this is volunteer work, so right. you know, you know, you got to be careful with what you ask them to do. So you know, they're they're pretty appreciative of the opportunity to help serve the the county. And you did a terrific job as as commander. I know we had a nice Christmas party. Yeah, uh, that, over Christmas time, it was I mean, just wonderful. Yeah, I couldn't believe the the number of turnout for the the Christmas party. Yeah, and then we asked them to bring some gifts for the job and family services for the the foster kids and stuff, and they brought in over 150 different gifts. So that was amazing. It's a a lot of wonderful people, and what's surprising is there's a lot of diversity in there, isn't there? There's people of all ages, men, women, and mm -hmm. and how many members do we have now? Uh, right around 85. 85. 85, and and the number that that's very crazy to me is that they put in almost 7,700 hours of volunteer time. You know, that's uh, that's amazing. Uh, over 10 of them with over 200 hours apiece. Wow. You know, and, and a lot of these guys have this new class um, that we graduated in 2015. At least half of them are still working full time, you know. So they work full time, then they come in and in the evenings or on the weekends and, and do their patrol or help out with community events. And what are some of the responsibilities? Um, they, you know, they just got to check the cars and make sure that, you know, everything is, is good to go, just like a deputy does. You know, they have a log sheet, and then they get to go drive around um, wherever they, they want to drive around in. And um, they pick a couple different sectors, like what deputies work, and they go and patrol, because 
oftentimes deputies are running from call to call to call. So they, there's a lot of roads, you know, when I was a deputy that I never even patrolled down because I just never had the time. So these guys are actually able to get out there and, and takes go down, up the slack. Yeah, and go down some of these back roads. And uh, one thing that we added was them doing you know extra patrols when people request it. So they actually drive by the house and you know and just give them you know a, a, a feeling that you know someone's driving by and somebody you know is out there. And one of the, one of the cool things was when I was talking to someone about some burglaries over in Liberty Township. I'm just talking to her for about 10 minutes and she's like, oh, there goes a community watch car right now. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, they also, so. if there's if people lock themselves out of their cars, they help yeah. with that. Yeah, they help do out. some traffic. Yeah, they help out with lockouts, and um, you know when they get on disabled vehicles, they help out with traffic control and things like that. So, uh, in in our March training coming up, we're actually going to have some traffic control training. So um, it'll be good for them. I was uh, I was kind of really amazed because I was at the Pickerington. A tree lighting ceremony. I'm, I'm, I give a prayer every year in, in Pickerington, the heart of Pickerington. But the number of community watch people we had out there that evening, helping people get across the street, mm -hmm. making sure they were they got through traffic safety, and just uh, there, it was yeah. really wonderful. Yeah, they uh, they helped participate in over 35 different events in 2015. Wow. So you know, we we send it out if. Uh, the community needs help with something. We send it out to the members, and a lot, a lot of times we get a good response on, on them wanting to come out. Um, one of the latest things that we did, dispatch asked us to help with uh, the business surveys. You know, this is a big thing because you know we recently got a new computer system that was purchased, so all the information from businesses needs to be updated because businesses are coming and going all the time, and it's been four years. So these guys have helped pass out over a thousand different business surveys to these uh, businesses to send back in. And that way we have a record of who the business, what alarm system they have, who should be there, who shouldn't, hours open and closing, those kind of things. Yeah, who to contact if something should happen instead of just leaving them a note, you know. Right. So it's, uh, it's important information for the deputies and the fire department. Now, the other thing is if someone is out there today listening or uh, viewing this program, and they want to get involved in the community watch program. What is the uh, qual qualifications criteria, and then what are some of the things they go through before we actually put them out in the neighborhoods? Yeah, um, actually, we're going to have another class in March. Um, we're hoping because we have some people that just put in after the last class, so they've been waiting almost a year to get into this. So we have we actually have eight that's waiting on the class right now, and um, all they have to do is go to our website programs and services, and then there's the community watch program. And they can read about the community watch, and then they can uh, fill out the application. It's only like three pages long. Okay. And it's, um, you know, they, they have to get it notarized because we have to do a background check on them. But, um, you know, no, no serious crimes, you know, no felonies or anything like that. They have to have a good driving record. Um, I've had to turn some people down because of their driving record. Right. So, um, you know, and yearly we check their, their driving to make sure that they're you know, they're out in, in our vehicles and everything. So um, we do updated training. Every other month we do something. I get feedback from them on what they want to learn. So uh, this um, actually um, about a week ago we did the CREST training, which is the community um, response to an emergency situation. So they actually appreciated uh, learning all that. So and then in March we'll do the, uh, the traffic stuff. And then, uh, you know, we get... Uh, Deputy Skeen out there for the, the Soren stuff and Deputy Meade out there with weights and scales. So we're always trying to give them something, you know, to learn about the office because they're wanting to know. And, you know, of all the programs that that uh, we have put forth in the sheriff's office since I've been there, there, there is without a doubt no more uh, program that's done more for the community that's cost virtually not much money no. and has been so well received as our community watch program it continues to grow. Uh, the people there are just wonderful people, as you know, yeah. and it's there's people from, uh, I don't know, 25 to uh, in their 80s. Yeah. 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 And uh, lately we've been getting a lot of deputies, family members, you know, parents and siblings and things like that. So, you know, we, you know, we, we welcome everybody. I mean, some, some of the events that they helped out in is uh, helping us work the, the tents and things like that. Um, sweet corn festival and the fair and uh, but they also help out with like the drug drop-offs you know we usually have a spring and a fall Hello. and a drug drop-off so that's um, you know we the health fairs and um, family fun fairs so we're getting a call <laughs> okay there so. uh, 
That's kind of funny when you're doing a television program and all of a sudden the, somebody's talking on the phone here, so I, <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Um, lots of good things going on. So um, with the Community Watch uh, group, um, what has been your biggest surprise as the commander of that? Just the willingness to help. You know, I, I think that's the biggest thing because this is a volunteer program and, um, you know, they, they need good leadership and, you know, when, when you ask something, you know, they respond. And, right. and they, you know, there's, with the business surveys, I, the Lancaster area, you know, we're having a lot of issues with that and, you know, a couple guys came up to me after the meeting said, how many you have left? And I said three and he said, we'll take them all. Yeah, you know, so and I'm reminded just a few years ago because some of the training they have is the CPR, those type of trains. Uh, Dale Clements, as you remember, was with his, I believe it was his son, and they were at Wendy's, and someone had a heart attack, and they were able to go ahead and administer that, and, and in fact, save the person's life. Yeah, yeah, and he um, he's seen them since then. Yeah, and um, you know, he he got an award for that, and it's just it's amazing because you never know when, you know, that's going to happen. Now, before we go off the air, uh, something that you were involved in, run your stash off yeah. uh, for St. Jude's Hospital, uh, a fundraiser that the Sheriff's Office does every year in Canal Winchester. They do a 5K. Uh, tell us a little bit about how that turned out. Well, this is the second year for the 5K and um, the fourth year that we've actually grew our mustaches for the five, uh, for St. Jude. You know, it started a couple years ago, and um, every year we've raised, you know, between a thousand, two thousand dollars, and we, you know, Deputy Warner wanted to make it, you know, bigger and better, and um, it was for a good cause. So he asked permission to do the 5K, and um, last year we we raised over five thousand dollars. Wow! And um, this year we raised more than that. We raised um, over five thousand dollars. Okay. And we had 20 more runners this year. And, and it was uh, a rainy, it was, cold morning, was, too. I remember a, that. It was, yeah, it was miserable outside. So um, these people really chipped in and, and, and helped out a lot. But to date, we're just under $14,000 raised for, for St. Jude. And it's going to be so, an annual event now, I'm going to take it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, there's no stopping it now. Well, I was surprised that morning because when uh, Loretta and I, and uh, I brought uh, uh, my grandson, and it was just like blowing and kind of cold and I'm thinking is anybody going to show up for this race today and uh, I got there and everybody was there. That's right. And it's, it's a family fun event, you know. Um, I've we got have the SWAT vehicles there. SWAT, yeah, Highway Patrol, I think. Um, Lithopolis. Most, yeah, and Lithopolis and, and um, even the Division of Wildlife was there. I mean, we have all kinds of representatives coming out to support this uh, for St. Jude. And, and past two years, I've ran it with my son, so. All good. Yeah. So is your son going to be a, a jogger like you? He might. He yeah. might. So, you know, with his with his running abilities, you never know. Yeah. So. Yeah, we're just about out of time. Uh, appreciate you being here. Appreciate the job you've done as the commander of the Community Watch Program and all the good work you do in the community. If you're out at a festival, if you're out at a parade, you're probably going to see Jesse Hendershot because he yeah. attends a lot of events, a lot of different hours. Also did a great job with our United Way campaign, a record participation within the Sheriff's Office last year. And uh, again, you received an award through the United Way program for that, uh, for your diligence. Good work. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you so, being here. Thanks for having me. We're just about out of time. Do appreciate, again, the uh, students here at Fairfield Christian Academy, our executive producer, Kelly Roberts, and certainly you, the viewers and listeners that join us each and every week. And uh, we've got a great uh, season coming up, 2016. We've got some wonderful guests coming in. Make sure you, uh, you view, the, uh, view those that are listening listen to our program. Clock on the wall says we've got to go. Until next week, same time, same place. God bless, and we'll see you right here next week. were woven into the culture of Native American tribes. The descendants of the early Europeans built a business here based on agriculture. And today, 
this unique destination in the central Ohio countryside comes to life with stories and memories centuries old. The Fairfield County Historical Parks invites you to amazing Rock Mill. Above the falls of the Hocking River Gorge, here, together, nature and man have created some truly American stories that you'll want to experience with the entire family. Visit us or learn more about Rock Mill and the largest wooden water wheel in the nation at historicalparks.org.